Okay, this, let me back up where you can see it. This is my 98 model Chevrolet K1500. Got 20 inch wheels on it. Fix and fit some bigger tires on it, but that's what I've got on it now. They're like 32s. Got a six inch lift. Been doing a lot of work to it. Trying to get it like I want it. Put a new dash in it, all that good stuff. I mean, not a dash, I put a new grill in it. I gotta get the dash in it. Repainted it. What I wanna show you is I have had problems with my AC not working. Uh, we recently built the motor, put a 383 in it, built it up, pulling about four and a quarter horse, or something like that. Pretty stout motor, got a lot of torque. Um, but let me show you what I had here. My AC was not working. Let me see if I can get up in this thing. I'll show you what I got. My AC wasn't working. The only way I could get it to work was to run it directly from the compressor power wire straight to the battery and then switch it on and off manually. That's the only way I could get any AC. And I'm in Texas and it's really hot right now, so I had to have some AC. So me and my wife took it out the other day and we, we didn't want to roast in it, so I rigged it up with that switch, but I wanted it fixed permanently. And I've been messing with it, trying to figure out what was wrong with it. I thought for sure we had done something wrong when we put the motor back in it. But it wasn't that. I'm going to show you what I did. And that way maybe it'll save you some time if you ever have to do this. Um, I changed this control panel out, which was not the problem, by the way. That was $200 part. It's a new part. Um, and that was not the problem. I was having some problems with it anyway, so I needed it. Um, sometimes it would not want to switch from hot to cold and sometimes it would kind of act funny. So, I mean, it did need that switch, uh, this control panel. So it wasn't a waste of money, but that was not my problem. Um, let me go over here and pop the hood and I'll show you what it was. Like I say, this is a, a 98 model. I've had it since I was 18. It wasn't new when I bought it, but it was almost new. The hood latch kind of acts funny on it. Let me pop it again. I think it had 17,000 miles on it when I bought it, and I've got over 330,000 on it. So anyway, enough of that. Let's show you what was wrong with it. All right, this is my motor. We built this 383, put some headers on it. Um, pretty, pretty good lift cam, makes a lot of torque. I built it to pull with, so I mean, it's making gobs of torque. But uh, anyway, that's besides the point. The only way I was able to make it run was to run a hot wire from my green wire here to my battery. Like I say, that would, it would run like the, the air conditioner would run, but it was not fixed. Um, Cause that's, that's the only way we could get it was with the manual switch. So after a lot of looking, people had told me to go over here and try shorten across this low pressure switch right here with a paper clip. I tried that, it never did work. Um, so I thought, well, it's not the low pressure switch, um, which it wasn't, it wasn't the switch. Um, that didn't do anything, so I didn't look there too much. I ended up pulling the whole dash apart, like I said, and changed that control head, it didn't work. So I did what I dreaded doing. I also pulled the fuse box apart, checked everything there, everything was good did what I should have done to begin with, which was start tracing this wire back from my compressor and through the wiring harness, you know, that encapsulated in that plastic sleeving, traced it through here, pulled all this apart and right behind the motor over there, I've already buttoned it up so you can't see it now, but behind that, uh, uh, the air box there, there was a green power wire that I found that was burnt in half. Well, it wasn't burnt in half, it was rubbed in half. Um, I guess just, you know, however many years, 25 years of rubbing, it finally worn too. But anyway, that wire went to my low pressure switch. It was the green wire that goes to that. So that's why shorting across that thing did not help any because the power wire going to the switch, I mean, to the plug was no good. It got no power to it. So shorting across it was doing nothing. 
this was bypassing all that and running it. Um, and it wasn't, you know, ideal, but it was working. So anyway, if you have this problem with this truck where the, the AC will work, if you have it manually connected, I mean, it would blow ice cold in there, um, but it, the, it never would work without hooking the compressor up directly. The compressor never would kick in. If you have that problem, save yourself a little bit of time and go ahead and start checking these wires to begin with. Make sure they have power where they're supposed to have power. I didn't know how to do that. I know how to do it now, but I didn't know how to do it then. Had I known how to do that, I could have tested that wire over there to begin with for 12 volts found it real quickly, but I didn't know that then. Um, I'm not a car mechanic. Um, I, I just, my, my mechanic friend, he couldn't get to it. So I, I had to have the truck. So I had to just start somewhere. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you. you have, if you have that problem, just start checking those green wires from the components back and see after you check your voltage, if one of them is bad, trace that wire back and, and find, because you just might find that you've got a burnt wire. But I'll go ahead and crank it up here and you can see that it's fixed. Besides, I'm sure you want to hear this thing run a little bit anyway. Oh, don't that sound good? AC. You see both my lights are on. It is blowing cold. And as you can see right there, Pressure is running. It is running good. It's doing what it's supposed to be. I'll kick it off so you can see what it looks like when it's not kicked on. See the compressor is not running now. The front of it's not running. So anyway, that was the problem with it. It's all good now. AC's blowing cold. Good luck, hope it helps.